So we had a look at the workspace in New Game Maker Studio 2. And uh, if you haven't seen this video, I strongly encourage you to go check it out. And if you're not aware, yes, Game Maker Studio 2 beta is now out and you can go check it out. But uh, for those of you who cannot uh, have access to it, I'm here to show you all that is new and uh, how to use it. So we've had a look at the workspace system, allowing you to uh, navigate between your different uh, resources and today I want to have a look at rooms because they are one of the most significant uh, changes as in uh, they, they are what uh, you're going to be using a lot and uh, uh, you're going to be have to be aware of uh, when actually planning out your games. Now uh, what's nice with Game Studio 2 it will create a default room for you so uh, let's go ahead and open this and uh, as you can see there's uh, quite a bit of information to get your head around uh, you still have your resource tree on the right, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, your room over here, which is a tab, uh, just like the other workspaces over here. And on the left, you have layers. That's right. They're pretty awesome. As well as all the different instances. And down here, the room properties. So, um, what we're going to first look at are these layers. So, what they do, what they are, why you would want to use them. And, uh, well... Basically, they allow you to order the depth of your resources, be they instances or backgrounds, tiles, paths, and so on, and just generally organize your workflow a lot better. They also allow you to do quite a few different tricks. Uh, one of them is allowing you to hide different uh, elements that you may have on your in your room that are only used in logic. For example, you may have collisions, uh, be not done by instances. You can actually do them in quite a few different ways and you may not want them to show up. So you could just put them all on a single hidden layer, essentially. Uh, so let's have a look at how they work. As you can see by default, there is a background layer and an instance layer. Uh, so if we go to our background layer down here, you see it uh, opened and we can just go ahead and change the color with uh, this much improved uh, color picker that we have. It will change the background as you can see it has a nice uh, soft pink color and uh, if I were to create an object I could add it to my instance layer up here now to do this uh, just to demonstrate it I'm going to quickly edit my sprite now I will be making a full video on the sprite editor uh, later on because of how how much has changed uh, it's quite impressive what they've done you can have a lot more features uh, but this is a, a whole subject for a different video and what you can do ready to add instances is from your resource tree drag and drop your uh, instances like that and that will go into your instance layer. Now I could create a second instance layer by clicking this button down here and now I can drag more instances on and I can turn some on and off, uh, even lock them so I can't edit them. So I can uh, easily work with different parts of my scene. Uh, if in, fa in fact, there's something quite uh, cool you can do, uh, which is you create different groups. Uh, if I click down here, folders, and I could, for example, put my background and my instances into a single um, layer. Now, I would have to put my background in the correct order, such that uh, my instances get drawn in front. And now I can disable multiple things at a time. So you can clearly identify different uh, parts of your scene. Now you have noticed there's lots of different other types of layers. You have tile layers down here. I'll just move them up here. They allow you to place tiles. Now this uh, I won't demonstrate here because I'm planning a whole video on tiles, uh, which may come out uh, later this week because of how much there is to cover. Uh, there's also paths, which is quite nice. It allows you to create a single path. So if I just turn off my instances, just to make this clear, I can start... Um, I should be able to start drawing my paths, uh, or at least if I remember how to do so. So you can either create a new path here, and then I can start drawing my path within the room. Yes, so you have to first create a path, which uh, gets placed in your resource tree and then you can start drawing your path and what is great about this new path editor is that well not only can you edit it within um, the workspace 
uh, which could be good if you're working on something which isn't a level based. However, paths are often uh, based on your level, so you can edit it inside the room, which is really quite nice. And uh, you can add smooth curves. And uh, there's actually something I have been wanting for a long time. That's the better ability to add points into your path. And as you can see now, it's very easy to just drag out extra points from your paths. Next, we also have asset layers. Now, to show them, yet again, I'll have to create a new sprite. So I'll create a sprite, uh, just quickly go in, make a nice uh, blue puddle thing, like so. And now we're in my room, I can uh, turn off the path, we don't need this anymore, and create an asset layer. Now, what an asset layer uh, is, it is uh, simply put uh, just a layer where you can just put sprites on. You don't have to create objects to place them down. Now, previously, in uh, previous versions of Game Maker Studio, you would have to create a background set as a big tile and place it around, uh, which really wasn't uh, optimal. Now you can just take any sprite and uh, place it down, rotate it, do whatever you want. It's really quite nice to add uh, different uh, variations to your level that may not be part of tile sets etc and uh, it's really quite versatile as you can see we also have all these nice resizing tools which are quite a lot better than they were in the old gaming studio which are also available on objects uh, so if i go here i can also scale and rotate my objects anywhere any way i want and uh, they actually work far better than they did back in studio 1.4 so uh, this is it for basic room editing. There is something else I want to show you, which is really quite nice for some of the larger projects. If I were to create a new room, I'll call it a parent room. And uh, maybe this room will have uh, a blue background and we'll always need to have uh, this one object in the top left. This is such a typical use case in Game Maker Studio, having one or two objects uh, in a top left corner of your room, perhaps even outside your room like so, um, being used as control objects and every single one of your room have it. They control how your player may uh, count the deaths. Maybe it's there to uh, ensure the view is placed correctly. There is a bunch of different uses for these kind of objects and you may not want to have to replace them in every room every time and say you need a new controlling object you don't want to go through every single one of your rooms and add it in this is why you have inheritance for rooms so if i were to create a new room again uh, actually if i were to right click on power room and do create child which is a nice shortcut actually for creating children i could call it a room test for example and now, as you can see, it has these two um, layers, which are the same as in my parent room. And uh, any change I make in my parent room will also happen in my test room. And if I change it in my test room, it will uh, get unlinked and um, will be different. So you're, you're able to still change whatever you need to change uh, if you have anything to change. You can also change the background color over here say you find uh, you found a much better color to use for your game uh, it will go ahead and happen in room test and if i have a, a, an asset layer over here i thought i would uh, create a folder never mind an asset layer over here and put a bunch of um, sprites in uh, as you can see it's much nicer to have this uh, main uh, general room that most of your other rooms will follow. So this is uh, pretty much it for what I have to show uh, for rooms. Uh, I must point out that due to the layer system, uh, the way you create instances, for instance, the way you get some instances has changed. Uh, instance create, in fact, does not exist anymore. And uh, though I will be covering this in greater detail uh, when I talk about the changes made to GML, I just want to make this a point because it is tied to rooms. So instance underscore create, as you can see, no longer is a function. Instead, you have instance creates depth, which allows you to create an object at a certain depth. 
though uh, I don't see using it much because it's a much better alternative in my opinion. Uh, instance create layer, which allows you to select a layer or the name of a layer and create objects to it. This makes it much easier to ensure that some objects are drawn on top of each other, um, make sure that the instance order is correct as you have these nice clear defined layers. You don't have to think about, uh, oh, I, I have a depth 10, perhaps I need to create my object at depth 50 so that it's between two other objects. None of that. So you have a very nice, very clear system with these layers. Now there are a couple other changes to GML. I will be covering them later, so make sure you stay tuned in for that. Uh, so and subscribe in order to see it. And if you have enjoyed this video and are also excited uh, to see more features GameMaker Studio 2 has to offer, uh, give it a like and I'll see you guys next time uh, for some more GameMaker Studio 2 tutorials.